We are back on Red's franchise. It's been a minute. As I explained on my main channel, I had COVID, so I had a sore throat, couldn't really speak, which means I couldn't really record. Still dealing with a bit of a cough, but hopefully it's not too prevalent in this video. As we are currently 34 and 42, as I said at the start of the last episode, I kind of anticipated being a little bit more successful, but things really didn't catch on until June. We were very, very bad in May, and, you know, teams go through ups and downs. But when you look at this May schedule here, and you can see, we didn't do very well. We had one win for this first week. That was it. And we didn't get our second win until the 13th. There were more than 10 days separating two wins, which is not good. We would win four in a row, though, and then continue on to lose our next one two three four five six seven before back-to-back -back wins and then lost four in a row to end may not great june has been better to us so far but friday and saturdays are not going very well for us as on fridays and saturdays since the 7th of june we lost every single game not great not great but we are better five and five in our last 10 this is a growing process and we are progressing a little bit i have made a change to ellie de la cruz everyone was requesting this uh he is just the fastest player in mlb so his speed is now up to a 99 and um i could probably move arm strength to 99 as well i'm gonna leave it at a 95 whatever um and he's been electric to start his career a little bit of a cold stretch now not really hitting for as much average and is striking out quite a bit and that is reflected in his discipline and contact which are unchanged anyway but here in our mlb the show world he's also struggling a little bit only a 222 average but 13 home runs and 16 steals now the thing that really stands out when you look at ellie de la cruz is the extra base potential already 14 doubles and 13 home runs in 71 games that's pretty nice considering his at-bats it's not incredible or anything but once this average gets up a little bit you'd expect to see the the on base and the slug continue in that direction as well he's still super super young and he is our big time star of the future undoubtedly undoubtedly uh, in the last episode we also called up matt mcclain finally who is listed at shortstop. He's having a great start to his career, which is actually quite reminiscent of what he's doing in real life. He's actually been better in real life somehow, but these are great numbers in the game. Average well over 300, four home runs, 13 ribbies, and uh, he's, I mean, he's, he's on base, is uh, quite good, his on base is good, his slugging, phenomenal, OPS right around 900, three triples already. It's crazy how realistic some of these stats are up to this point. But this is going to be a very interesting episode as we have the draft in just 13 days. And that's going to be a really big part of this episode. Uh, I'm doing some scouting here. I'm not the best at it, but I think I've done a better job this, this uh, time around, this cycle. And we had a decent draft last time around too. But I think we've pretty much locked into our guy the fact that his draft rank was 12 and joaquin arnold is our draft rank of one means if he is available he absolutely has to be our pick when you look at his present numbers like they're pretty good they're not like amazing or anything and there's a big range but his future numbers project to be amazing he's only 18 years old 510 right-handed uh third baseman that can also play first Defensively, he's kind of like whatever, but offensively, he looks to be a machine. And if you look at the top end, which I'm going to choose to, if you look at the top end of his future projected numbers, 78 contact right, 90 left with 82 and 84 power against both sides, 88 vision and 81 discipline. If he reaches that top end of his potential, he's going to be an unbelievable player. And his potential right now seems to be at worst 84, which is pretty good. And at best, 99, which it probably won't be, but it could be. And that would be incredible. You're talking about like a borderline generational player at that point. And there are a number of players who are in that range. I want to know more about Diego Rodriguez, even though he's a closer. Uh, Bruce Tashner, we have a pretty good scouting progress on. Uh, but the problem with some of these guys is we're not going to be able to draft them. 
Ricky Murphy, probably near the top of our list as he's draft rank 71. We have him 95% scouted, and his draft rank for us is 5. Now, he doesn't really seem to be a strikeout guy at all. At all. However, pitch to contact seems very good. I don't know. Seems like kind of a weird prospect. Uh, I don't really like taking closers very high. We know all about Michael Jordan. He's just probably not going to be available by the time we get to our second pick. But he looks pretty awesome. Like, potentially even better than the number one player in Joaquin Arnold. It's just a difference of potential at that point, And I would probably opt to take the higher potential player. That's just me. And this guy's a first base slash right field. So first base probably. And I think the third base, first base is a little bit more valuable. But that's kind of where we are on that right now. We can change scouting a little bit. And uh, hopefully just get in a really good position in the draft to just uh, dominate and draft the best players available. That's all. But let's get back in with some critical situations as we look to end June and pretty much head to the draft. We have a nice little win there. And we'll jump in against the Marlins. Edward Cabrera has thrown a gem. A three hitter has walked four but has struck out six. We are down by one, and his stamina probably is not going to be in a great spot. You can see our team rankings there. They're actually pretty good right now. We have the fifth most home runs in the league, the sixth highest on base percentage. This is what we wanted this team to be. And Hunter Renfro is having an incredible season, hitting over 300 with 16 home runs. He is over three, though, today. Edward Cabrera's pitch count is at 91. And he's looking to close this out. What's his stamina? His energy looks to be in incredible shape. That's got to be bugged, but it is MLB The Show. Wouldn't put anything past them. As you can see the scoreboard there down in the bottom right. 1-1 one, one count. Hunter Renfro puts it in play. Diving attempt by the first baseman. Renfro doesn't run well, and he is out at first. Jesus Aguilar recovers makes the throw, guns down Hunter Renfro at first base. That is a potential game-saving type play. Can we challenge that? I sure would love to challenge that. How close was it? We'll never know. That's Jock Peterson comes to the plate. I mean, that that is just a... It's a completely different inning if Hunter Renfro gets on, is kind of what I'm trying to say. Runner on first, nobody out versus now. One out. Jock Peterson's up, nobody on, and Jock strikes out. It's all down to Jake Fraley. He is 0 for 3. Edward Cabrera has thoroughly dominated this Reds lineup. Not what you like to see. But you know what? All it takes is one swing. I'm not sure how his energy is not in the red at 99 pitches. Or at least the yellow. But that is MLB The Show for you. I'm sure the fact that it jumps into the moments, it doesn't even know how to factor in that he's thrown 100 pitches. As Jake Fraley got a hanger, decent hit, but it is tracked down by the center fielder. And the Marlins shut out the Reds, one to nothing. Complete game for Edward Cabrera, and complete dominance from Edward Cabrera, really. Allowed seven base runners, struck out seven, but a complete game shutout is uh, pretty awesome. Graham Ashcraft on our side actually pitched very well in that game. Unfortunately, takes the loss. But that performance brought his ERA under three for the season. And even though he's not really striking anybody out, he's really doing a fantastic job of limiting runs. As we didn't have a great end to our June. Kind of floating around 500. Which, when you look at our record 37 and 46... Floating around 500 is not going to be good enough, even though that's what the entirety of the NL Central appears to be doing. We need to be better than the, the opposition. We need to go on a win streak. Hopefully we start to string some wins together, and this is going to be a good way to do that. Hunter Green has a shutout here late in the game, has only allowed one hit, has walked four, but has struck out eight. Tommy Edmond looms large on second base. We do have a four-run lead, and we are coming up to the All-Star break. You know, a performance like this could potentially put a player over the top and get him into the All-Star game. 97 pitches deep for Hunter Green, but thankfully it is the same deal with the stamina. Not really much of a factor as he gets a pop-up, one pitch, one out, Jock Peterson. 
gets out number two here in the top of the eighth as we'll have to face the very dangerous Nolan Arenado. He'll take strike one, a very well-located slider from Green. And maybe strike two. It's going to be called on the check swing. 0-2. Go back to that slider. Don't even have to uh, get it in the zone. As Arenado soared. Another check swing called for a strike. This time it's strike three. Arenado back to the bench. And we are looking to finish strong. Some insurance for Hunter Green wouldn't be the worst thing. As the Cardinals bring on Yankee legend Giovanni Gallegos. Steer gets out ahead of that slider. Hold foul. I'd love another run. Because you know what? Honestly, I think with four runs, you can kind of blow that. As as bad as that is to say. You can blow a four-run lead in the ninth. But five? Five is where it really starts to be like, okay, you need a big-time rally. As Ryan McKenna doubled in the second. We might look to pull him, though. You know, you can't save these guys. We're going to get Alexis Diaz up probably as well. But um, Ellie De La Cruz not playing today. Neither was Jake Fraley. I assume they started with maybe a lefty. Matt McClain also not in the lineup. What, is, what type of lineup did they put out? Uh, we're going to bring in Jake Fraley. Big pinch hit spot. It's bottom eight. You can't save these guys for the ninth if you have a lead and Hunter Green shuts it down. This is the perfect time to try and get some insurance. And that is what we call insurance in a big way. Jake Fraley sees a pitch, hits it out. Solo home run, pinch hit off the bench, and Fraley will touch them all. 106 off the bat, travels nearly 430 feet. The big red machine is rolling here in Cincinnati. And that is a no-doubter. That gets out in any park. And uh, Fraley loves hitting here at Great American. And that is a big bomb. Huge. And that's what I talked about. 5 nothing. And they might not even score a run in the ninth inning. Like, I get that. They might not even score. But five runs, I think it makes it feel, you know, even bigger. Uh, as Johnny Diaz having a great year, hitting 324 right now. OPS probably near 900 with an on-base of 408, slugging 523. Incredible. Incredible numbers from Yandy Diaz. He's been a great pickup for us. Kind of under the radar to line out to right field here. But he's been a perfect hitter at the top of our lineup now for a couple of uh, seasons. And do I pull Jonathan India? Let's give Ellie De La Cruz an AB against the righty. Average down at 215. He got the day off today. We'll get him a pinch hit. Might be a little bit better in the field than um, Jonathan India anyway. And maybe two pinch hit home runs in the same inning. That'd be pretty incredible. I know you probably wouldn't typically pinch hit for Jonathan India in that spot. But you know what? Maybe a defensive replacement. Get the young guy in an AB against a reliever who's struggling. And it works out perfectly. Ellie De La Cruz laces a ground ball through the gap. And we're going to take the stand-up double for Ellie De La Cruz. The pinch hit works to perfection. Now we have a runner on second. The 17th double of the year for Ellie De La Cruz. Got a fastball. Didn't miss it. Line drive. Kind of went the other way. Honestly, great fielding out there in center field. Because that probably could have been a triple. As uh, Tyler Stevenson, somebody we could have pinch hit for. And then just kind of Kurt Casale. But we'll keep him in. He's having a great year as well. Average, looks like it's 325. Can faintly see that on the scoreboard there and right. It's basically impossible to see, but I'm maybe able to make that out on base at 378. Something like that. As Stevenson will really get into that one. This one's going deep to left, but tracked down by the left fielder. And the average is a 325. But the damage was done. Jake Fraley didn't waste any time. Got a pitch down the middle. Did not miss it. And Hunter Green will come out for the ninth as Fraley takes over in center field. Ellie De La Cruz takes over at second base. And we'll see if Hunter Green can end it. You have four, five, six in the order. Let's try to uh, pitch backwards here. Start out with off speed. Get me over. Change up for strike one. Show him the slider. There's strike two. O'Neal not ready to hit. And now this is pitching backwards. Finish with a fastball. 
O'Neal has no interest in swinging, it would appear. Let's try to dot him up. Fastball low and away. Check swing. And they're going to say he went. It's another strikeout for Hunter Green. He is now to double digits. I believe that's strikeout number 10. As Wilson Contreras will try his luck against the dominant Green. It's a one hitter here in Cincinnati. Yes, I know he's walked several. But this is a great performance from what we expect to be our future ace. He's getting real up uh, with the pitch count here. I don't really think I want to throw too many more than 110. Here's number 109. Fastball. Strike three. 102 at pitch number 109. Hunter Green finding it here late. Last batter of the game, hopefully. Lars Newtbar takes ball one. You can't pull Hunter Green at this point. Just challenge him with fastballs. Strike one down. Well located. Hopefully strike two. And it is. Newtbar fouled back. 102 again at pitch number 112. Turn up the heat, Hunter Green. Strike three, got him looking at 102. Goodbye. And the Cardinals drop this game to the Reds in huge fashion. One hit as an offense. Struck out 11 or 12 times. Hunter Green ends the game with 12 strikeouts. Only five base runners. The Cardinals had as many base runners as we had runs. What a performance. Unbelievable. Let's see if we can win this series, actually. And we'll have an opportunity to. Bruce Dar on the mound against Nolan Arenado. This game has been a bit of a slugfest. Definitely a lot different compared to the last game as Hunter Green just dominated them. They're hitting a lot of home runs, fourth in the league, 119 of them. Uh, and we saw Nolan Arenado get out last time. This time it's a ground ball to Spencer Steer. Is Ellie De La Cruz not in the lineup? Where's Matt McClain? We might have to check to make sure these lineups are right. Because we want to play our young studs. And you know what? Even if Ellie's struggling a little bit, we want to see more of him. Look at that location from Bruce Dark Ratterall. Beautiful on the cutter. Great spot for the sinker, but Tyler O'Neill fights it off. Try to get him looking. Decent spot. Maybe leaked out over the plate a little bit too much. Fouled off by Tyler O'Neill. Looks a really tough slider. Try the sinker. Ooh, O'Neill fighting up there. We're trying to locate beautifully, and we really are for the most part. And that ball is laced to left field. Yandy Diaz can't come up with it. And it is a huge one-out double for Tyler O'Neill. Off the closer, Bruce Dark Ratterall. He ripped that 106 off the bat. Didn't quite locate it well enough. As Gorman puts that into play. Advances the runner. But he doesn't, doesn't matter if we can get one more out. Bruce Dar against Wilson Contreras. Just get the ground ball. There it is. It's off Bruce Dar. McLean has a chance off the deflection. Makes the play. Game over. Reds win. Via an assist from Bruce Dar. Ground ball kicked off his foot. Found Matt McLean. Matt McLean heads up play to get the ball over to first base and win the game. Ellie De La Cruz homered in this game. Where is he playing? Very interesting. We'll take it, though. I'm not complaining. Worst case scenario, we split the series and we don't. We win it. Three games to one in July is starting off with a bang. Huge. As we'll face the Cubs. It is a 6-6 six, six ball game. Matt McClain is a home run away from the cycle. A couple extra base hits already, obviously. And now his runners on second and third in a deadlocked game here. Bottom eight, two outs. I'll tell you this much. As nice as it would be to hit for the cycle here, that is not my goal. My goal is to do what Matt McClain does and put the ball in play, make great contact, and score two. Take the lead here, bottom eight. That is the goal. The home run would be nice. I'm not power swinging. Just put it in play. Nothing fancy. We don't need the home run. And we got a pop-up. Just laid on the swing. And right to the first baseman. Had the height for a home run, probably. 
nowhere near the distance. And we are now to the bottom of the 11th. Down by one. This would be a brutal game to lose. In which Matt McClain is a home run shy of the cycle. Ghost runner on second. Cody Hoyer on the mound. Getting him over is not good enough. We need the base knock, and we get it. McLean dunks that into center. Run comes around to score, and we are tied in Cincinnati. No home run, but McLean delivers. PCA got the ball in quickly. We were never going to take second base there. What a prospect he is for the Cubs, by the way. Pete Crow Armstrong. Now, of course, the Cubs' everyday center fielder. And we are down to Spencer Steer. McLean has pretty good speed. He honestly, I might have to bump his speed in stealing. His 79 and... 79 and like 41 is certainly not good enough. As we were nearly picked off there. Trying to take second base here. Getting a scoring position. And here we go. Ground ball. Does it get through? It gets through with the speed. With the steal. And we have first and third. One down here in the 11th. Perfect time for a steal, hit and run. Speed for McLean takes him first to third easily. And it's Tyler Stevenson in a full count, having a great year. 333 average, OPS floating around 900. And it's a huge spot. Full count here in the 11th. Base hit ends the game. And it is ball four. Stevenson walks, and it's bases juiced for Ryan McKenna. No, it's not. Take Ryan McKenna out. We, we cannot hit with Ryan McKenna in this spot. Yandy Diaz. He's only got 64 clutch. I'm going to bring in Jonathan India instead. Pinch hit. Jonathan India. 2-2 two, two count. Why is it Ryan McKenna still? No! He struck out. Why, dude? Why can I not pinch hit there? And now it's up to Jock Peterson. Base is loaded. Two outs. Bottom of the 11th. He's three for four with a nuke. Come on, Jock. Ball put into play. To the left fielder. Out number three. That's the end of the 11th. And do we lose? It looks like we're, we're, we're giving knuckles. We got fireworks. That should be a win. 8-7. We win in the 12th. Spencer Steer with a home run. McLean goes four for six. Obviously, huge game. Doc Peterson and Tyler Stevenson homered. Uh, what a crazy one. 8-7 in 12. Unreal. So we are 7-3 and three in our last 10, by the way. And the month of July has been off to a red-hot start. 5-1. and one. And a series win over the Cubs would be really nice. And today is the All-Star Futures game. Let's go ahead and pop into that. We have a player playing in it. And how do we how do we play that? Here we go. All-Star Futures game. Let's go ahead and pop in. Who is playing in that for us? So the NL, we have Edwin Arroyo. He's actually had a great year so far. Four homers, hitting 282. Gavin Sheets is in the All-Star Futures game. That's brain dead. Cam Collier is in here. That's one of ours as well. Hitting cleanup. Seven home runs, 278 in the minors this season. James Wood on the Dodgers. Well, he's on the Nationals uh, in real life. Right? How, how did he get to the Dodgers? That feels unfair. Wish we could see his history. Yankees, Austin Wells, Marlins, Jacob Berry. Uh, and the pitcher is Kyle Harrison. Well... I don't want to play the whole thing. So we will play our lock with Cam Collier. Which I think is, is, is a good choice. Cam Collier, super young, super talented. Got off to a little bit of a slow start in real life this year, but I think is starting to turn it around. I think he's the youngest player in his league currently. Or one of them, at the very least. So... I'm not really too worried about it. I think he's going to end up being a really good player. And hopefully in-game, he ends up being a great player for us as well. He'll face Taj Bradley, top prospect for the Tampa Bay Rays. Struck out, I think, 11 
against the A's, as I record this yesterday, um, did end up allowing a couple of runs, though, which hurt his line. But he was a strikeout machine, as he's looking to do the same to Cam Collier, who's down 0-2 in the count here in Texas. Got the Texas flag flying high in center field. And Cam Collier, slow roller out to Taj Bradley, who controls it, throws on to first. And that is out number one for Cam Collier. As I think Kyle Manzardo, another Rays prospect, was a first base. Here's Jackson Job, one of the top pitching prospects in the Tigers organization. Collier, perfect timing, just popped it straight up. And Job retires Collier. Not exactly showing out at the plate today. As now we see Felipe Jimenez. Not familiar with him, to be honest. Looking for the first hit here in the sixth inning. And we're swinging away. We're getting pitches to hit. Timed it up perfectly again. Just can't really seem to put good wood on it, unfortunately. Don't really know why. Timing it up, just like either popping it straight up, hitting it down into the ground. And we get one of the worst pitches to swing at that we've seen so far. And Collier is all over it. Awesome coverage from the center fielder, retire Collier. And that sent him back all the way to the track. Not what we wanted to see. And Cam Collier yanked Matt Mervis in now. And uh, that's just not what we wanted to see, to be honest. Not what we wanted to see. So, is what it is. Not a great game. Put really good wood on the last one, even though it was just out of the zone. Um, but the NL seemed to be taking it pretty easily here. 7-3 going into the ninth. AL can't really seem to do much in the way of scoring. And that pretty much is the game. NL is going to take it 7-3. And I wish we had a better showing from Cam Collier. Doesn't really seem like we got much out of... Um, who is the other guy? Edwin Arroyo. Didn't seem to get too much out of him either. See the game log here, or the uh, box score rather. Arroyo 0 for 3 with a strikeout. <laughs> Not great. We'll see if we can back to our winning ways here. And we can't get back to our winning ways. We lose to the Cubs, but it doesn't matter. Because the draft is here, and I think that's going to be a good way to close the episode. Joaquin Arnold is number one on the board, but obviously Bruce Tashner we like quite a bit as well. Draft rank two for us. We have a pretty good idea about him. Uh, some of the players I didn't really look at too much. I'm just not going to draft a closer this high. There's just not really a reason to, in my opinion. Giovanni Gaudio. Seems like he's got a big power surge, but not a whole lot else. Michael Jordan we know about, but he looks good. I don't think we're going to be able to draft him. If something changes, I'll let you know, obviously. Raul Caruso, draft rank 70 for us. Draft rank 13. We might have something with him. A lot of stamina. We'll see. We'll see. It's draft time. Here we go. First year player draft. We did really well in the last one. We took Alexi Vina, who is not currently at the, uh, the major league level. But he's getting up there pretty quickly. And we'll see how this draft goes. With the first pick in the 2024 MLB first year player draft, the Pittsburgh Pirates select Jason Nava, whose draft rank 15, our draft rank 45. Didn't really like Jason Nava too much, but they take a high school pitcher at number one. With the second pick in the first year player draft, the Washington Nationals select David Ling. He was our third ranked player, a junior college pitcher. We just care about Joaquin Arnold making it to our pick. That's pretty much it. Third pick of the draft. The Detroit Tigers select Brandon Lopez. He was our draft ranked 28. Didn't really have a good idea about him. A third baseman. And now it's the A's on the clock at four. Let's go ahead and uh, simulate to our next pick. And they go with the player we were looking at, Giovanni Gaudio. 
a slugging outfielder with big time power from Illinois. But uh, was not to be. And at number five, with our pick, we will be taking Joaquin Arnold. 18-year-old third baseman out of high school. He is our draft rank one. He is a third baseman who could potentially play first base as well. Throws right, bats right. He's healthy, clean bill. And uh, hopefully he is our kind of underrated slugger of the future. Only 5'10". But you know what? Jose Ramirez is maybe even 5'9". And packs a punch. Jose Altuve, obviously. As James Batista is the pick of the Royals. First baseman. And he looks actually quite good. He looks like he is an amazing player. Oh my goodness. Maybe not the best power, but vision and discipline is incredible. Contact is incredible. He looks like a DH. He looks kind of like Yandy Diaz, to be honest. But that's a really good player. Barton Sinclair and Miguel Castilla make up the rest of the picks. Michael Jordan is the pick at nine. Amazing contact. Also a little bit reminiscent of Yandy Diaz here. Is probably never going to be available to us, so is what it is. Juan Castro, a defensive-minded center fielder, goes at number 10. I think we'll simulate to our next pick. Is there anyone that we especially wanted that's off the board that we really liked? Not DJ Dietrich. Orlando Manzo is a great name. Kevin Gibbs didn't really care about. Alexi Valido, I think, is like the super high potential guy that we really didn't have a ton of scouting uh, done on. But none of these players are super high on our draft board, or they're not super scouted. Raul Caruso would have been the one. He's injured, though, so there's a risk there. And, you know, I'm worried about his frontline potential. Home runs per nine is good, pitch control good, but nothing else really looks to be that good. Honestly, didn't really know why he was so high on our draft rank, so happy that he's actually off the board. Makes it a little bit easier, but maybe he's a beast, and I'm I'm screwing up. So far, it really doesn't seem like we've missed out on a whole lot. But Bruce Tashner, that's who we missed out on. Hmm. That sucks. He goes at 32. Probably would have been the pick for me at that spot. So that, that definitely is not ideal. And we could go Ricky Murphy. His hits per nine looks awesome. He's a pitch-to-contact guy. He's the number five player in the draft for us. And we have a pretty good idea about him as a player. A lot of these guys are not super well scouted, but you can't really get to all of them. And some of the players that I looked at just haven't ended up being all that good. So it's just, you know, one of those things. So I guess pick here for us is pretty easy. At number 41, we're going to be taking pitcher Ricky Murphy out of Venezuela. His hits per nine looks like it's going to be great. Velo, pretty good as well. I worry about him as a true pitcher, to be honest. Home runs per nine, walks per nine, strikeouts per nine don't look very good. But we'll see if we can develop him and draft Ricky Murphy out of Venezuela. Not a very Venezuela name, I'll say. But maybe high potential, another high school player, 18 years old. Super young and hopefully will be very good for us in the future. Our next pick is at 73. And Richie Wells here was not rated. But for us, he's draft rank 49. Looks like his velo is pretty incredible. And he has potential as a pitcher, to be honest. Looks like his control is going to be quite good. Let's go Richie Wells. Why not? That's going to be our guy. We're hoping the potential's at like the front end of that 87 and not closer to 71. His overall is going to be very bad, but that's going to be a player we hope to develop quite a bit. And uh, we'll see what we can do here at 79 here in round three. So we could just take a shot on some of these players. No one's going to be higher than draft rank 64 for us right now. Do I want another pitcher in Anthony Solis? 
I'd love someone with higher strikeout potential, but we're just not going to find it because these guys are not like particularly well scouted at this point. Which is, uh, it just is what it is. I think you, you kind of go into like making sure you can get a really good player at the top of the draft and then hoping for the best at the bottom. And that's kind of the direction we went. And I'm okay with that. If we don't get a stud at pick number 79, that's fine. I'm okay with that. But I'm not really liking these pitchers. If I take a chance on a high potential player, Anthony Madlock looks to be a potential defensive beast with, with power. He's not going to be good, but we're going to take a shot on Anthony Madlock. Not Matlock, Madlock. How small is he? He looks tiny. All right. Him to our next pick here at number 109. Again, we're going completely for potential at this point. Uh, and just, we'll, we'll take guesses to see if any of these players are going to end up being good. Uh, most likely they won't be, which is fine. We're okay with that. But uh, obviously, hoping for the best. David Reyes, second baseman. Won't really see it with him. I mean, none of these guys are going to look good at all. Just they, they might have high potential, but their overall is going to be terrible. But most of these guys look terrible. Eric Dorda. Maybe super high contact. That's it. I mean, we have no idea. We have no idea if any of these players are even going to be okay. Don't really need a catcher. No closers are even available. Okay. Um, let's go with Adrian Gutierrez. Oh, that's not who that is. There we go. Adrian Gutierrez. He's a pitcher. Another 18-year-old switch hitter. His overall could be incredibly low as we make it to round five. Do we go with another starter? Do we want to play it safe? Julian Brito is playing it safe. His potential is not going to be great. His overall could be okay. I want higher potential. Otis Swanson looks like he throws absolute gas. Rest doesn't look okay. Let's go with Otis Swanson anyway. And then I believe round six is the last pick in the draft for us. Let's just see who has, who goes up to 99 potential here. Anybody? Chad Thompson. Ooh, man, his, his hitting skills look atrocious. I mean, they some of these players just... I mean, they're not even going to be close to what it says. Man, do they look awful. I don't know. They're really... There's not a whole lot here for us, <laughs> to be honest. Take a catcher to get depth in our, our system. Oh, geez, these players look awful. Uh, We're, we're going to go Anthony Solis, I think. Yeah, why not? Don't have the scouting progress too high, but his potential and overall seem to be the best combination. And that is the 2024 first year player draft. And that is it. So we'll eventually have to sign those draft picks. Joaquin Arnold is our number one. And we'll find out about them August 1st. So we could simulate to that point and see how good they are as we have another loss, unfortunately. Do we have anyone in the home run derby? Let's see. We don't. Tyler O'Neill, Juan Soto, Mike Trout, Rowdy Telez, Pete Alonso, Salvi, Jordan Alvarez, and Julio Rodriguez. I'm not going to participate in the Home Run Derby. If we have somebody that is in the Home Run Derby, of course I will, but not the case this time around. We have an all-star starter. Really, we don't. That sucks. I mean, you see the usual suspects in here that you kind of expect to be in there. Uh, and Julio Urias. I think we'll simulate the All-Star game until we have a starter. Um, AAA All-Star game, not going to worry about. We will, like, use the prospects. Like, we'll do a player lock on Alexi Vina at some point. I can guarantee that. Still is yet to homer in AAA in 83 at-bats. Not great. His power's going down. He has 10 doubles. Has not hit one out of the yard. Ugh. 
That is unfortunate. But that's not really his game yet. Hopefully we can develop the power. Duolby Marte is having a great year. Cam Collier, kind of in that same spot, obviously. Man, a little bit unfortunate with uh, some of what we're seeing here. But that's all right. Johnny Pareda is uh, off the injured list. Let's go ahead and end this episode by trying to sign our draft pick. Joaquin Arnold's going to be number one for us, of course. And then Ricky Murphy and Richie Wells. We got Ricky and Richie. Joaquin Arnold. We're going to have to pay him big money. The slot value for the pick is $6.5 We will give him... Six point seven six million design, and he declines it. What are we doing, Joaquin? Disrespectful. Ricky Murphy. Lot value for this pick is about two million. I think we can offer that and get him pretty easily. And Ricky Murphy is our first signee. The pitcher. Uh, Richie Wells. We will give a mill to. I think he's going to sign pretty easily. Or let's do nine fifty nine. Richie Wells has signed on. Let's add some of these other players. I think we're just going to try and sign the entire class. Once they have 50% interest, they can sign. So lease declines. 58% interest. Does, is it really just like a coin flip at that point? Maybe we will, go, we will go to August to see how good these players are. So I don't leave you guys hanging. Because I feel like that would probably be a little bit frustrating. As the Padres make a huge trade acquiring top flight reliever Yoan Duran from the Minnesota Twins. Luis Campusano, top catching prospect, who has really kind of been like a quad A player, raked at double and triple A, hasn't done it in the majors yet. Adrian Morejon, who is once considered a top prospect for them, and Ben Zarate for the big time reliever. All right. The Twins are making all types of trades. Moving Jorge Polanco and Alex Kirilov to get Danny Jansen, who's having a great year to his credit. Okay. That's a trade. And here we are against Cody Hoyer again. Fraley has homered in this game. Three for five. So is Nico Horner. Uh, Hoyer is not that good. Is he the Cubs closer in game? Why would that be the case? That's super bizarre. Super strange. But with runners on first and second, here on the road, Yandy Diaz at the plate. I like our chances, to be honest. He's got three pitches that we have to worry about. There's the fastball at 97. And we were late on that. Just late. Fouled it back. That's kind of the pitch we can't afford to miss, because it's right, it's right there. But good A-B from Yandy. Base knock, could score a run, tie things up. It might not, though, because his speed is not incredible at second base. Would certainly take a walk. Base is juiced for 3, 4, and 5 in our order. No out still. We are set up to, to put the go-ahead run across. Strike 2. Fastball up in the zone gets Yandy swinging through it. Late on that one. Come on, Yandy. Put the ball in play. No double play. Strike 3 at the knees. Change levels. I thought it'd be low. At least it's not a double play, though. And that's a double play type pitch. Fastball down. On to the next. Tyler Stevenson. Great hitter. Is 0 for 4 today. He's due. This is the time to make it happen. Come on, Tyler. Fastball. Sent out to right field. It's out number two. And suddenly, we had first and second. Nobody out. Now we have two outs in the inning. And it's all up to Hunter Renfro. We got to get to Jock Peterson. Who do we have off the bench? Jonathan India. What's Renfro's clutch? Only 54? We got to make a change here. We got to make a change. I hate to say it, but it's it's got to be done. Jesse Winker, I think, is going to be the best option. 70 clutch. I mean, India's is higher. But we have the platoon advantage with Jesse Winker. And he's an outfielder. Uh, OPS over 900. He's had a good year off the bench. This is our guy. I think he gives us the best chance to win here. 70 clutch means 70 contact in this spot. 
If we can just get it to Jock Peterson, I like our chances. But if we get a pitch to hit, obviously we we gotta we gotta hit it. Can't miss it. Fastball, Winker out in front. Doesn't dunk in. Also isn't caught, luckily. Way out in front of that pitch. Not gonna get behind it again. Like did with Yandy Diaz. There's ball two. Good AB here. We need a base hit. Plain and simple. I'd love a home run. Gap shot would be all right. And we get a pop-up. Fastball up and away, painted. Decent swing on it, Cubs win. What are you gonna do? We really, we had an incredible opportunity in that spot. I mean, we had first and second, nobody out. The strikeout looking with Yandi was not good, obviously. I recognize that. I uh, didn't want to ground out into a double play. Thought it was a little bit low, didn't want to risk it. We struck out. Obviously, we would look to avoid that in the future. Don't want to strike out in those spots, but uh, it happens, unfortunately. As we're going to go ahead and increase the offer on Joaquin Arnold. We're going to give him just shy of 7 mil. And he's going to decline it again. What are we doing? Why do you not want to be a red? I'm going to give you 7 mil to be a Cincinnati red. Jesse Winker was injured. We try to sign draft picks again. He's up to 56% interest. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and wait on it. We're going to wait on it and wait till the next day that we can do it. Three losses in a row. That's really tough. Three and seven in our last 10. Joaquin Arnold's going to be a red this time around, though. I'll guarantee you that much. 6.82 million. And now he's accepted less, idiot. You could add more money. You wanted to be greedy. Huge, huge amount of money to sign with the Reds, but we signed our top guy. And that was obviously the, the big goal here. Glad in Otis Swanson. This guy's going to sign so easily. Get him out of here. He declines it. He had 60% interest. Brutal. I know we offered him like less than slot value. Anthony Solis, we got for a good price. Anthony Madlock is not super interested. And also might not be good. I'm going to let that sit for a while. We'll also add in Adrian Gutierrez. It's end July strong, man. I mean, too many losses recently. There's another loss. Gavin Williams is now injured. And 100 Green has another shutout late into the game. We need some momentum. I mean, we've lost, what, like five out of our last six or seven? And it could be like five or six in a row, to be honest. Not good. IKF with Chicago. Punch him out. Little flare. Vosler tracks it down. Easy out. We are out of the inning. Um, I don't really care about insurance here. We're going to go next AB as Renfro singles. Jock Peterson singles. Double play. Renfro to third. And then a ground out. <laughs> so much for that inning. Let's just do what we do with Hunter Green. Punch guys out. Dansby all over 102. How do you like the off speed? Got to locate it a lot better than that. He's never going to go after that. Slider. Panic swing from Dansby Swanson. Two strikes. And we're going to go back to the slider. We're not showing him the fastball when he's all over it. And it doesn't matter. Because he punches the slider. Into right field for a single. It's okay. Double plays on. This is what I was talking about with the uh, the insurance earlier when we had a four-run lead. Pitching for the double play. Warner runs pretty well, though, but Hunter Green's getting pretty tired. Here's a flare out into left field. Braley all over it. Out number one. All right. We're jamming. Ground ball. McLean going to take it himself. There's one. Back on a first double play. Reds win. Perfectly done from Hunter Green. And that is game over. It is another shutout. Only strikes out seven. Did allow four hits, three walks. Renfro homered. Jock Peterson homered. It's a big win. When Hunter Green pitches, we seem to win, which is what you want from your ace. So we'll take that. Stevenson's going to miss a couple of days. Chris going to keep him active. 
Kurt Casale will take over the duties. I think this is going to affect our record, though, as we we'll look to sign draft picks. Joaquin Arnold, I feel good about. Uh, Madlock, I can increase his offer. He might decline, though. Nope, Anthony Madlock is signed on. How small is he? We need to figure that out. Uh, Otis Swanson should sign on. Why are you declining it? Like, you got to know you're not good, right? Gutierrez has decided to sign. And it's only Otis Swanson holding out at this point. And these jerseys are going crazy on Justin Steele. Just get to August. Actually, you know what? Do I leave you guys on a cliffhanger? I might have to. We're losing too many games. I will say that. Very frustrating. Matt McLean's 16-game hit streak, though. He's if Kevin Newman was good. That's the review. Everyone wants Kevin Newman back. No, you don't. I know he had a 20, like, seven game hit streak for us. Pretty unbelievable. But um, Matt McClain is the future. Mm, not with swings like that. What is that? That's a hanger. Perfect timing. Easy fly out. I don't know if he's going to extend his hit streak to uh, 17. He may get another AB. The Nationals are trying to fight back in this. Yanni Chirinos on the mound has pitched very well for us. They're actually going to try to steal. Here's a throw. Not in time. Kirk Casale is no Tyler Stevenson. And the Nationals rally score seven in the inning and win. They also have Josh Hader now. What is that? Lucas Sims gets shelled, allows three earned runs, only records an out. I thought that was going to be an easy win. Instead, we drop our third in a row. Stevenson's back. Tony Santion's closing for us. Or actually, is it tied 1-1? This team's a disaster. We're not there yet, I know. But it's very frustrating. Need Tony Santion to do your job. Do your job, Tony. Strike two. Get us to extras. We never should lose a game where we're, where we're up 4 nothing in the ninth or the seventh. It was. Still, we allowed seven runs. Santion's not the guy. He's not the guy. We got a mound visit with Tony Santion. He's got one more, one more batter, probably. If he allows another base runner, he's done. Strike two. Don't worry about the distance on that. That's strike two. That's all that is. Slider. Strike three. Got him looking. Perfectly located from Tony Santillan. Ball bet goes down. Now it's Alex Call. We're going to give Tony Santillan this batter. He's getting tired. He left a fastball right there. But it's a pop fly to center field. Kepler's there. And we're headed to extras. This is a must-win game. It's a must-win game. De La Cruz is 0 for 2. Has he walked? He has walked. Maybe even two walks. But probably just the one. He is 7th or 8th in our order. So, that makes sense. And he would only have a, a few ABs here in a game where he scored one run. But he's got big-time power. And he's got potential to give us a big-time lead. Of course, Ghost Runner on second base. I would take a walk if they're going to give it to us. 3-0 to Ellie. Kepler and then the top of our order coming up. It's McLean, Diaz, Stevenson, Renfro. 3-0. We decided to green light. Big time power from De La Cruz. You know what? He's going to do the job here. That should advance the runner. Here's the throw. Not in time. That's okay. That's totally okay. Like A walk there is cool, but you want to get that runner over to third base. You have to. And that's exactly what Ellie De La Cruz did. Got a fastball to hit. A little bit late on it, just late. But did the job. Drove it to center field. Got the runner over. It's a super productive out. And Kepler, you hope, can get him in. Now, his average with runners in scoring position was atrocious there. Looked like it was in the 100s. We need to do better than that, as that is called strike. Two. Don't like that. Kepler, big wood, though. 
Wait, pause. Kepler deep to right center. That one gets out. Max Kepler. Line drive, laser beam home run to right center field off Alex Hill. That's not his name. Garrett Hill. I don't know. I don't think, I don't know if he exists. If he does, I haven't heard of him. Either way, <laughs> Max Kepler, two run home run. And that has given us a big lead here. So Ellie getting the runner over actually doesn't even do anything. Because Kepler has just gone ahead and brought everybody home. That's massive. And then we can bring out Alexis Diaz or Bruzdar Gratterall for the bottom of the 10th and win the game. That's the goal. Some insurance would be nice, though. If we can make it four, I feel good about where we stand. Man, Matt McClain really trying to get a base hit down that third base line. See if Anthony Castro, the pitcher, changes his approach. As Kepler... Nope, Matt McClain gets good wood again. Line drive to center. Max Kepler provided the damage. A two-run home run to take the lead here in extras. And now we need Alexis Diaz to shut it down. We're going to call on him instead of Bruzdar Gratterall. His ERA is super high because he's walked 23 in 24 and a third innings. His allowed average is actually super high as well. Uh, but this is a big confidence-building moment for Alexis Diaz. Why are his numbers so atrocious? He's got 99 hits per nine. He's dominant in real life. In game, he is maybe the worst reliever in the entire league. Atrocious. Fastball down. You want to take the slider down? That's what's going to happen when you see the fastball in the same spot. Later, Kaber. That's how you pronounce it, by the way. Kaber Ruiz. Or probably Kaber, right? But it's not Kiebert or Kaber. It's like, it rhymes with Glaber. And that's straight from Kaber Ruiz himself. But it's probably like Kaber, right? Like, it's not Luis Robert, if you didn't know. It's Robert. As strike three. I'm Michael Chavis. But I just call him Robert because it's, it's easier. But I'm, if you call Luis Robert or Robert, Robert you, you have to know that's not correct. And I, he previously said, like, it's fine, call me whatever. I think recently he's come out and said, like, hey, it's it's over again, which he's already said before. Anyway, that's not relevant here. We got a fly ball. Hunter Renfro's there. Renfro. And that is out number three. Diaz, one, two, three. Sets him down in order. That's a confidence building save for Alexis Diaz. I know he's their setup guy. I know he's their setup guy, but it's a weak lineup. There was a chance to really get some, uh, some confidence. And he struck out too. Very, very similar situation. This time, TJ Antone's in the game. We're facing off against another NL East team, the Philadelphia Phillies here on our East Coast road trip. Probably on a road trip, but <laughs> I, mean, I guess it could be. Cincinnati's not too far from these places. They could have the bus, but I assume they probably flew, but I don't know. I don't know how it works. But uh, we need to sit down Randall Gritchick, who's a pretty good eight hitter for uh, the Phillies here, of course, on the Rockies in real life. has played for the Cardinals and Blue Jays. Maybe there's one that I'm missing, but I, I think really just those two. And he doesn't really hit righties as well as he hits lefties. Ground ball to India, end of the ninth. Is he playing shortstop, by the way? The CPU puts out some interesting lineups. McLean gets a piece off Alvarado, the big time closer. And Matt McLean with a lead off double top 10 to give us the lead three to two. We've had trouble hitting so many different pitchers, even on balls that we time up. And against a dominant closer, Jose Alvarado, Matt McClain jumps on the first pitch, drives it out to deep left, and gets a big-time double. Unbelievable. So Matt McClain takes the place of, I believe it was Max Kepler on second. And Jonathan India gets a good piece of this one. Line drive right at right field. We're going to try to advance on that. McClain runs pretty well, and he's tagged, and he's advanced to third. Again, I'm probably going to boost his speed and stealing just based off his real-life numbers. It seems stupid that they're so low. He is very fast. I'll base it like the way they do. I'll base it off StatCast. And Matt McLean, his StatCast sprint speed, I can give you the per percentile, is 92nd percentile. So he's one of the faster players in the entire league, So. Having him at 79 is just simply too low. It just is too low. I'll probably put that into the high 80s or something. 
As Stevenson, inside out swing, beautiful base hit. We certainly lead four to two as Alvarado's having a heck of a time here in the top of the 10th. Still only one out in the inning and it doesn't get easier. A matchup against Hunter Renfro is super tough. So they go to a new pitcher. Another lefty that throws hard. It's Gregory Soto, the former all-star reliever for the Tigers. Of course, in Philadelphia now. The Renfro really hits lefties. Unfortunately, doesn't even get a sinker. Pounds the four-seam fastball into the ground. Same pitch I struck out with looking on Yandy Diaz. Uh, and this results in a double play. Gonna warm up Alexis Diaz and Bruce Dar Gratterall. Uh, TJ Antone's not gonna get this inning. We're gonna bring on Alexis Diaz again. Here we go. It's 9-1-2 and two in the order. Just challenge him. He's seen two fastballs in a row. Do we show him a third? We do. And we get the pop-up. Diaz is underneath it. But not the other Diaz. This Diaz. Out number one. Probably have to be a bit more careful with Alec Bohm. Although he is 0 for 4. And not really that great of a hitter or anything. But it's at the top of their order for a reason. Fly ball to shallow center. Fraley coming on makes the play. Two down. It's an easy inning so far for Alexis Diaz. And it's not Bryce Harper. It's Harold Ramirez. And we're going to challenge Harold Ramirez. Fastballs up in the zone. Don't want it to leak over the middle, but we want to challenge him. Show him the off speed. Doesn't want anything to do with the slider. And you know what we do? We follow that back with fastball down. Got a lot of plate. That's strike two. That was not where we wanted it. Elevate the heater. Got down the middle. Ramirez all over it. Still strike two. Slider. Can't locate it. Three and two count. Bryce Harper on deck. You're getting a challenge fastball. Fly ball. Foul territory in right field. Renfro coming on. Can't make the play. We're throwing it again. Fastball. Strike three. Got him swinging. Dot. In on the hands from Alexis Diaz. And he's building that confidence in a big way. I know Bruce Dar is our closer. And twice in a row now we've had Alexis Diaz save the game. But you know what? We need him to be, to be better. And he's pitching better. Kepler with a home run too. He's playing really well right now. Three wins in a row. Four wins in a row. As we are to the trade deadline and facing Andrew Painter, we are 49 and 59. Nine games out of first place here in the NL Central. But I'll be honest, this is a lot for this episode. So we are going to call it here. The White Sox have Harrison Bader. The Pirates are looking to trade Brian Reynolds, which seems insane. And he signed an extension in real life. Is that in the game? It's not in the game. So I could actually, can I fix that? I'm not sure if I can fix that. Uh, but it, there's been a lot of things in this episode. So I think we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and call it here. So that is gonna be the episode. What about the draft picks? You'll find out in the next episode as I need to sign i think one more right and maybe we've already done it i don't know but um if we lose the last guy whatever but that is going to do it for this episode thank you so much for watching hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you in the next one hate to leave you on a cliffhanger but also i don't see you in the next one take it easy